If we were to untax labor, if we were to untax creativity, untax investment in true productive capital, and simply collect taxes on the basis of what everyone takes out of the ecosystem, the oil, the minerals, the coal, collect taxes on the basis of the resources you use and not what you produce, then that would beautifully align the productive incentives with the goals of society. Chris Feder is Professor of Economics at Bard College in New York State. She believes that social problems like the abuse of nature and gender inequality can be traced to injustices rooted in the control over society's resources. I asked her to explain why her fellow economists do not clearly spell out the facts of life in language that people and their politicians can understand. Was there a conspiracy of silence to protect vested interests? I shy away from using the word conspiracy. So I'm simply saying that if you were to objectively look at the incentives that are embedded in the tax system we now have, it shouldn't come as a bit of a surprise that we use land as though there were an infinite amount of it available to be used and used up, and yet we, the economy as a whole, scrimps and saves on labor as though it were extraordinarily scarce. Well, so we have unemployment. We are businesses, employers, the last thing they want to do is hire workers because it's very expensive to hire workers. The tax system makes it appear as though labor were scarce when it is plentiful. Plentiful to the point of having unemployment rates that in real terms, if you look at discouraged workers and underemployed workers, is rivaling the unemployment of the Great Depression. So our whole tax code is biased in favor of using land liberally as though we could never run out of it, but scrimping on labor as though it were the scarcest resource around. Therefore, we have chronic unemployment and we have periodically real estate driven booms and crashes and even even in the recovery from the real estate bus we see in the past generation um, the the phrase jobless recovery has become standard it, it appears that with each boom and bust with each recovery from a recession increasingly the last sector of the economy to get back on its feet is the labor market. Do we see in the numbers, we see GDP start to go up, we see profits start to recover, the financial system, profits were record high last year. We see the stock market recover, we see all these signs of growth and recovery except nobody has a job. Why in the world is that? All the reasons are complex, but a, there's a fundamental, large, in, a, a huge, vast bias in our tax structure against labor. Oh, it's no wonder. There's nothing to be surprised at. So you're describing a system that's malicious against people who want to earn a living. Most politicians, and certainly most voters, simply don't understand what's going on. They are innocent pawns in this game. And I, and I think that they don't understand it in large part because economists 
who would seem to be responsible for explaining these sorts of things don't even use a language anymore that enables us to distinguish between land and labor, the two fundamental factors of production. The way that happens is land is, is uh, pretty much been eliminated from the entire lexicon of economics, or if you have to talk about land, you refer to real estate, right? Real estate, which is a melding of land and the buildings on it. Even when the land market boomed and then crashed in the most spectacular way in the, in the past 10 years, even now, no one seems to be talking about land market speculation as the underlying cause, even though it, 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 it's, it's inconceivable how that would not be obvious to one and all. Because we don't speak of it. It's the elephant in the room. We speak of the housing market. As though houses, as though the houses themselves had strangely quadrupled in value over in some places in a matter of a few years. That's nuts. Housing is a composite good. It's the structure and the land under it. It's the land under it, of course, which is limited, which cannot be reproduced. That's what goes up and up and up in a speculative boom, right? After all, if housing prices were to uh, rise substantially, the economic response would be, we build more houses, right? Demand is outrunning supply, let's go build more houses. You can't go build more land. There's only so much of it. So there's, there's no increase in supply of land that will moderate a run-up in the speculative price. The only thing that stops a speculative run-up in land prices is that the speculative investors eventually, when they come to the very height of the tower, pause, catch their breath, look down and see, oh goodness gracious, how high we have come. This is unsustainable. They get nervous. They begin to back away. And then the, the land market crashes. There's, there's, there's nothing, there's no automatic dampening system to moderate the booms and crashes in the land market. Finally, what is the uh, automatic stabilizer to deal with this pathological situation? Well, what we need to do is to restructure our tax system in such a way that people are not paying taxes in proportion to what they usefully contribute to society. Instead, we go at it from the other end. People should be paying taxes in proportion to the resources that they are extracting from our resource base. The resources which, as they use them, less remains for others to use. And it would also mean in terms of our boom-bust business cycle, that the, the prospect for speculative run-ups in land values followed inevitably by disastrous and destructive crashes, that incentive would be choked off at the get-go. Because anyone proposing to invest in land would understand that if the land value goes up, the taxes on the holding of land would go up commensurately. And therefore, there's no profit to be expected from buying land simply for speculation. And without an incentive for speculation, you're not gonna get a speculative bubble. Instead, people would want to hold land only in order to use it. And if they held land to use it, and then they went ahead and used it either productively or to build a home and raise a family. There would be no tax penalty for using it. 
they would simply be charged for the holding of a parcel of land because, from a social point of view, the more any one person holds, the less is available for others. And as a society, I think deep down we still believe this land is your land, this land is my land. We believe that the land somehow belongs to us all. Even though we don't treat it that way, that's what we believe. But my point is that if we restructured our tax system, if we turned it right side up, then the incentive, incentives would always be to use land carefully and effectively, not waste it, and using land in, properly inevitably means employing labor or, again, in the case of residential land, raising a family, raising the next generation of workers.